I will call a meeting of the fiscal court to order. Welcome everybody here this morning. Uh, we do have uh, Chuck Javidan that's going to be joining us a little later on a presentation, a uh, brief presentation. Uh, Jeff and uh, Judge Faust and I have looked at it. Uh, but when he gets here, we'll, uh, we'll let him make his presentation. Brian Kurtzinger from our uh, ambulance service. We uh, kind of left something out, didn't we, Brian? Yeah, we did. We kind of <laughs> made a little boo-boo. Not too bad on our angels, did. We've, uh, upon reviewing it and we got the specs and everything, it was found that, there were, that a stretcher was left out. Typically, we'd stack a stretcher in with every ambulance. And uh, I have a quote here. Everybody wants to look at that, pass it around from the striker. It's the, uh, it's the company that we typically use when we buy our stretchers. This is the same model that we have in all of our other ambulances. It's not a newer model or anything. It's the same one. It's consistent with the mounting equipment and everything in our other ambulances as well. Um, what I would need to do was to recommend that we can amend the bid to add this to our to our to the current bid that we have. It's uh, the funds are available in our equipment budget for this. So with permission of the court commission. Well, we only had one bid, uh, and. By adding the stretcher, this is something that stretchers usually last for what, Brian, about five years? Usually about their five year time period, they're, they're about shot. Yeah. They're, they get to wear now, they get kind of flimsy, and right. stuff doesn't work as well on them as they do when they're brand new. Right. <clears throat> well, this adds $5,896 to the bid, and we only got one bid, uh, which we accepted at the last meeting of the court. Uh, Jeff, this is just adding something. That yeah, we you left could out. you could buy that just outright. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so separate, huh? We've already approved the funding for well for the ambulance and and this equipment, I mean. yeah, yeah this was left out and and we do have the money in the equipment budget. We just this was left out and we need the approval of the court to purchase. expend a purchase uh, this stretcher for five thousand eight ninety six. Mm -hmm. You just want to purchase it outright as opposed to amending the bid, wouldn't that be yeah, easier? That's what finished yeah. yeah. The gentleman that I discussed annual with, we kind of figured that would probably be the, the easiest method would be just to, you know, purchase Buy this outright. Have that as a, you know, as a separate purchase. I'd make a motion that we allow Brian to uh, purchase that outright. All right. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Let's move into uh, old business. You all received the minutes of the August 21st meeting of the court. Any corrections or additions to the minutes? I entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes, Jim. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion carries. We have a bid opening schedule for this morning on our road patching machine. We have one bid. This is from Equipment Marketing Company of Cloverdale, Indiana. Total bid price uh, for a Vortex total patcher is $69,200. We will receive a trade-in value of the 2005 model of $5,000. 
So our price with trade is $64,200. That's the only bid we received. Russell, you've looked at the machine. This is pretty much what you spec and wanted. And yeah. Yes. What's your pleasure? Is that about the price you were anticipating? Yeah. yeah. Time before, then we decided we needed to bid it out. Yeah. yeah. I'd make a motion that we approve, Judge. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. <clears throat> Motion carries. Before, when you all oh. talked about this, this piece of equipment, you all discussed leasing it. Mm -hmm. Is that something you're still interested in, or do you want to purchase it outright? I think that's what we had authorized, wasn't it? The Was it the five-year, five mm -hmm. uh, the lower interest yeah. on the five-year? It was actually a five-year loan from uh, Keiko mm -hmm. Leasing Keiko, Trust, yes. wasn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the Spread you it out over five years. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. okay. was my understanding. Next is the mm -hmm. ordinance two twelve oh six. This is setting the tax rates for two thousand and twelve. An ordinance relating to the adoption of the 2012 Marshall County tax rates. Whereas the Marshall County Fiscal Court adopted the 2012 2013 fiscal year budget on the 25th day of June 2012, and whereas the Kentucky State Revenue Cabinet has certified the Marshall County property assessments as real estate 1627884166, tangible personal property 1. 181918927 Public Service Companies, 90799558 Motor Vehicles, 232674408 Watercraft, 24687886 Aircraft, 8119 Inventory and Transit, 116 million 883580. Now, therefore, it is ordained by the Fiscal Court of Marshall County, Kentucky, Section 1, in accordance with KRS 68245 through 68249, there is levied for the year 2012 the general ad valorem tax per $100, $100 assessed valuation on all taxable property within the jurisdiction for the general fund and such additional tax rates for each special district or other fund as indicated. General fund, real estate, 10 cents. Tangible personal, 10.83. Health district, 7.5. Tangible, 7.5. Hospital district, 3.8 real, 4.3 tangible. Library district, 9.7 real, 9.7 tangible. Refuse District, 9.6 real, 9 cents tangible. Extension, 1.8 real, 1.89 tangible. Soil Conservation, half cent. Aurora Fire District, 9.6 real, 9 cents tax, uh, tangible. Gilbertsville, 7.5 real, 7.5 tangible. East Marshall, 9-4 real, 9-4 tangible. Possum trot sharp, 6-8 real, 6-8 tangible. Brinesburg, Draftonville, Palma, 10 cents real, 10 cents tangible. Elva, New Harmony, Oak Level, Fire District, 10 cents real, 10 cents tangible. Harvey Brewers, 7-5. 7.5 real, 7.5 tangible. Fair Dealing Olive, 8.25 real, 8.25 tangible. Hardin South Marshall, 10 cents real, 10 cents tangible. Section 2, in accordance with KRS 132487, there is levied for the year 2012 the tax rate of 11.2 cents per $100 
of the taxable value of motor vehicles, watercrafts registered in Marshall County. Section 3, in accordance with KRS 136.575, there is levied for the year 2012 the tax rate of 25 thousandths of 1 percent on bank deposits held by all financial institutions within the County of Marshall. Section 4, this ordinance shall be published in the Tribune newspaper by title and summary within 30 days following adoption. This ordinance becomes effective on passage and publication. All right. What's your pleasure? Motion to approve, Judge. Have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. I ask each of you to sign and we'll get this sent in so the sheriff can hopefully going to have our tax bills out hopefully in October. Should. Sir, should. Early October. Yeah, shouldn't be any. And we bet those new, uh, I think the sheriff shared with y'all, uh, everybody, uh, there's a new, what do you call it, Sheriff? A new bill. Yeah, uh, it's, new, it's, it's, it's a lot bill, simpler to read. Yeah, the old and, carbon bill that we've sent out in the past, that's gone by the wayside. You will be able to read these. Yeah. We, we feel like they'll be better, so mm. uh, hopefully. All right. Animal shelter fee proposal. Judge, we have been talking about incorporating um, a fee into the new ordinance as it relates to the animal shelter. And I had, just due to circumstances that we continue to have at the shelter, including individuals who have maybe 25, 30 animals on their property that they'll call the warden and we have to, we have to go remove from their property. Is there a way that we could advance the fee ahead of the ordinance since that's still in the process. I'd, I'd asked Jeff last week if he thought that was a possibility and he said it would need to be brought before the court, but a way for us to start recouping some of those costs. One person's issues alone has cost the county $500 in the last two weeks because she had so many animals on her property. And I don't know that that's taxpayers' responsibility. I think that needs to be their responsibility to, to pay for those animals to be brought in. It, it, at the end of the day, it's their negligence that's caused the problem, but as a county, the taxpayers have to foot the bill. We've trapped over 20 cats on this. It's and up I, to 30-something. Oh, is it up to 30-something now? Lady sold her property, and the new owners didn't want 30 cats running around, so we had to go out and, and trap them. Most of them were wild and sick and just pitiful. I mean, uh, but we are at the expense uh, of dealing with it. Uh, I, Jeff, what's your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, I mean, I think you can set a fee uh, just by uh, a vote. I mean, it doesn't have to be a part of a, the reason the, the, what we're talking about as far as the ordinance is required to be an ordinance is because there's going to be criminal penalties as part of it. Now, you can just, you can do a resolution to set fees that they're going to charge for doing things anytime you want. For example, like dumping those animals and leaving them there would have had criminal penalties attached to it, whereas exactly. right now it doesn't. Right. Something that they don't necessarily have to agree to. Right now there's no penalty in place. Basically, our, no. our staff, our wardens, the taxpayers, everybody is paying for it except for the person that causes the problem. And, and I was so just, I've, I've researched a lot and read a lot of different uh, ordinances around the state and, and elsewhere. Uh, it goes from anywhere from not having a fee at all to a progressive fee, you know, because we have, uh, my understanding out there, we have times that people will bring, bring each litter of animals every time they, and just keep doing it every, every you know, after every gestation period. And, you know, if what this would do was, you know, it would just every time you do that within a certain period of time, it gets higher and higher and higher. Mm -hmm. Now, or you could do a flat, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's just they lots of different places have done it different ways. The thing you get into, on the other hand, then criticisms uh, that I've found is that, you know, if you, pr you can price yourself to the point where you don't have that problem anymore of people bringing them in, but then 
they're going to be alongside the road somewhere. So it's, you know, you've got to weigh it out and determine what will work. Mm -hmm. And not all counties take animals that are just unwanted. I think no. that's an important point that that judge made a couple months ago when we discussed this. Other counties don't have the population we do because they don't allow everybody just to come in and, and dispose of their unwanted animals. Um, or especially... And, uh, sometimes there's a good reason. It's, and I'm then, not, you know... And there's like... I mean, and a, a very few counties will come and get them. Right, right. I mean, there's there's a lot more that'll take them than what will just, you pick up the phone, come get my unwanted animals. Right. And as I understand it, the primary purpose of our shelter is two things, and that's <clears throat> to take care of nuisance animals and aggressive animals that are posing a hazard to the public. Mm -hmm. but, but the county has always been very accommodating to try to take in strays and, and unwanted animals and that sort of thing, but it's getting so expensive especially in the case where people aren't being held responsible at all. I just wondered if the court would be interested. I know we talked about it, pros and cons. I know Terry's expressed his concern about people dumping and Bob, you as well. So, um, but the staff and, and the board have discussed it and we thought maybe a 15 or $20 fee per animal is, is going to at least cover the cost of euthanization if that's what ultimately ends up having to happen. Well, I, I agree with Commissioner Drew. We, you know, we've tried and we've tried different things, and and it appears in a lot of cases, as Commissioner Drew has pointed out, that it's the same ones that bring them back again and again, and and, and keep having. You know, when you have thirty cats on your property, I mean, I like cats, but I don't know that I like thirty of them running around my house. I, but. To each his own. I'm, I'm not being overly critical, but it, it does become a burden on us. And I think what uh, Commissioner Drew is talking about is at least recouping what our expenses are at the shelter for our staff. Now, I I don't know if we want to set a fee today or uh, let Jeff draw up some sort of a proposal. What What do you think we ought you to could. do, Misty? I mean, the the, the problem is now. The, right. the problem is now, and, and right now we've got a little breathing room at the shelter, but ultimately it just fills right back up. You know, every time they adopt 10 or 15 out, they get another 10 or 15, and there's more waiting. So um, we've talked about the pressures that it puts on the staff because they're the ones that have to go through and say, today's your day that you get put down, today's your day, and ultimately it all goes back to the people who are bringing them in. So I'm not saying it's going to fix the problem, but if we, I think it would be a relief to the staff to have some way of holding people accountable when they when they bring those animals in. At, at the very least, it pays for some food and, and lodging in, in, their, in their attempts to try to get the animals adopted. I think it would probably be a part of our ordinance anyway from what we discussed before. And if it doesn't work, you know, you know, I know that you've expressed some concerns about people dumping again, and they may very well, and we may have to go back and take it out. I, I don't know. We're just at the point where we're not really sure what else to do short of um, trying to hold people accountable, I think the ordinance will go a long way once there's some criminal, criminal penalties for dumping and, and um, that sort I, of thing. I don't thing. mind trying it. I just, I do remember when we didn't, we didn't take them years ago, we had cattle, and I know Terry does now, and, and you know, the, the times I know there was animals dumped, especially mm -hmm. large dogs that end up packing up and could mm -hmm. cause you problems and, and uh, around your stock, so. But uh, I don't mind trying it. It may it may help, and we can see we can change it if it if we appear mm -hmm. get a lot of complaints of just unwanted animals mm -hmm. all around the county. Then mm -hmm. we may have to change it. And the wardens do still, you know, if if in that situation you you were a an owner of cattle and you saw the animals and the, those animals were posing a nuisance, we still have the warden that can come out and take care of those sorts of issues. That wouldn't go away, and there wouldn't be a fee for that sort of thing. But I think primarily when we're talking about litter after litter of, of animals that are brought in and they're, they're just given to us because it's a safe place to take them, um, used to, you gave them away. If your dog had an unwanted litter, it was your responsibility, you gave them away. And I think we've just made it easy for people to come in and just bring them to us and they get the happy, fuzzy feeling that we're going to find them a new home and that's not always going to be the case. So do you all want to try the... Do you want to try it? And what kind of fare are going to propose? What about, what about this? I'm saying just what I had thought about working into. At one time, one animal free. Mm -hmm. uh, 
then your second and subsequent animals, or if you have multiple animals, it's $15 for each animal. I think that'll be great. Our problem is tracking. The tracking system that we are in the process of acquiring isn't in place, so tracking someone without, um, like right now we don't require uh, licenses or anything like that when you bring an animal in. We don't require anything that ties you to an address. Yeah, well, I mean, we just have to create a database with you the list of names. You have to create it and start fresh. Mm -hmm. I mean, start now. So basically, if you brought in one animal, any anyone from that address, mm -hmm. or could you bring one in, then your brother bring one in, your husband bring one in, and I mean, you know, that would kind of be the manipulation well, the address there. could move too. Sure. So I'd I, say it by in, name. In my opinion, I mean, if I'm taking an animal and I'm just expecting someone to take it from me, I don't mind paying a $15 fee because I'm not going to have to provide food and, and vet care and all those sorts of things. I think we're doing someone a favor already just by taking the animal off their hands. Now, whether or not everyone perceives it that way, I don't know. And there may be special circumstances. Um, where they may want to waive the fee. Is there a provision in there where they could do that based on the circumstance? Of course, you might be creating more of a problem there, but. I mean, I think the more, uh, I mean, you can set it as hard, a hard, fast rule as long as you want, or you can give, you know, I, I'm in favor, or I would personally be in favor of giving the girls out there as much, uh, Authority to make decisions based so on, too. so you know, because so your your hard fast rule ain't gonna apply well on in every mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Judge, are you thinking fifteen or twenty? Is that that's what we had talked about before? I'm thinking at least at least enough to cover if we have to put the animal down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say fifteen or, and and we have to feed them and we have to take care of their medical needs when they're there as well. Uh, and we've had a lot of medical needs on a lot of these yeah. kittens we've brought in and we've tried to get well and, and, uh. So 20 dollars? Uh, Jeff, what do we do when we have a situation where there's 30 or 40 or, I know of one place now has like 60 cats. What, what do we do if they approach, they arrive at the shelter with 50 or 60 cats and we tell them how much it costs and they say, no thank you. Right, I mean, that's, that's, that's... Then that's, we know probably what's going to happen, don't we? Right, I know exactly what's going to happen. They're going to end up in the bottoms so, on their way out. But somebody's got 60 cats, what are they doing now? They're just running loose. Yeah. Started to say, we're not... One of the veterinarians called me the other day about it. Well, I mean, you could put a cap, a max, 100 bucks. You got... Uh, well, I'm saying, if we let them drive away... We, we have a good idea of what might happen. And then the animal control people are going to be chasing them all over everywhere. I will say this. Most of the cases, I would say 99% of the cases that we've had of people with that many animals, they refuse to bring them in. They call us or the judge wanting us to come trap them because they're wild. I think, I think the case where somebody would bring that many in is going to be low, but they do bring, we've had as many as what, seven, eight, I guess, brought in by an individual at one time. I just anticipate those that will come out there are not going to pay twenty dollars for one, or certainly not sixty for three, and they'll just drive away. Yeah. <laughs> that's and I think too. that's going to happen. I think that's going to happen. But if we don't do but something, if we don't try. Well, I, I, I'm not. A, I'm not saying that we shouldn't try. I'm just yeah. being the devil's advocate. Yeah. And those are the things we're going to be dealing with. I see your point, we Terry, because they could end up in the bottom, mm -hmm. just like you said. We've seen it before. Right. Well, what the, they need to do, you know, the animals will be there. They need to make create a record if someone does leave with them and who they were and how many animals that they had. And I think the first time someone is criminally prosecuted under the new ordinance that prohibits dumping, I think that might go a long way in terms of setting the precedent for the fact that that's not going to be tolerated. If you've got a litter of puppies and suddenly they disappear, your neighbors are going to know about it, you know. Or if you've got a large animal that, that's dumped somewhere, you, you know, your neighbors are going to be able to identify that animal. So. What do you think? Okay, $20? 15 20 15 will put them to sleep, but we've got all the other costs associated. We've got other costs. I, I, I don't know what that is on the average per animal. So. Well, I, I don't either. I mean, you feed them twice a day and. We have staff uh, out there handling them. Right. 
I'd say twenty dollars would be reasonable. It uh, would be, Terry. But I, I, you know, why don't we start with that and see how that works? We I always amend it down if we think we have to. I make a motion when pose a twenty dollar fee. All right, you've heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Is that, is that for all the animals, or are you going to do the one free, or are you just going to, if you bring them one in, just want to make clear? I think it should be for all animals, uh, starting right out. And, I do too. Yeah. I really do. Um, it just keeps the the staff are going to be. I think muddled down with people trying to say, well, I've never brought one in before. Oh, yes, you did. Well, this is you. Well, no, it's not, you know, because we don't have any form of identification. You could have two people with the same name and it's going to be their word against staff's word. Um, well, it's a pretty reasonable thing, Judge, when you think about it and the cost and it, it was providing people a place to take those animals to dispose of them. And I think it's a pretty good deal. Actually, if you had, if you have an animal you want to get rid of, $20 is pretty reasonable. Yeah, it is. You know, as long as it's someone that's responsible, you know, halfway responsible. Now, it may increase the pressure on our uh, uh, dog wardens uh, with, if we're not careful. But anyway, we, I, I don't mind trying it either. Do you have a coffee machine out there? Mm -hmm. Well, won't you just do it like with the way the law is set up? With uh, when you take scrap metal in, copy the driver's license and keep that in their file. That way, you know who's brought it in. Hopefully that'll be part of our new system that it tracks everything for us. Right now everything's pretty well manual and it's difficult, but that's. All right, you have a motion and a second on the floor. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion of implementing a $20 fee for all animals brought into the animal shelter. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries. Chuck Jevenin has joined us now. Uh, Chuck, uh, an old Ballard County boy. Uh, Chuck has a, a unique opportunity, I think, for the county uh, with, uh, am I pronouncing this right, Corisoft? Yes, sir. Uh, this is uh, a, a system designed uh, to keep people out of confinement uh, and to give them an opportunity to uh, turn their life around, <coughs> Jeff, Judge Faust, uh, and myself have uh, heard his presentation. Roger Ford. Uh, Roger Ford uh, as well. And I've talked with uh, uh, Judge Telly. Uh, Jack was unable to be there when we had the presentation. He got caught up in court and couldn't be here. But I asked Chuck to come briefly, uh, talk about his uh, his program, what we what it's designed to do, and what we hope it'll do. The beauty of it, it costs the county nothing to to uh, participate in the program. This is the fees that are associated with it are uh, uh, are paid by the defendant. So, Chuck, if you wanna. Sure. Kind of briefly. Uh, sorry, I was late. I knew I was That's early fine. on the agenda, but I drove in from Frankfurt this morning. With me is uh, Travis Holder. He actually is our West Kentucky field technician for Corsoft. Corsoft is based in Lexington. We are alternatives to incarceration via rehabilitation company. We do tracking and monitoring through GPS technology uh, on participants through the court system. Uh, so a lot of times you have um, what we're doing here. What we do here is um, uh, those that are county inmates that cost the county. You know, sometimes 30, 40 bucks a day to house those folks. Uh, some of these folks would be eligible to be on a, a home incarceration or some type of monitoring service where they could still at least go to work, come right back home, be at home, and still be monitored throughout the whole process. We also do uh, social service work. Uh, we help uh, participants find job placement. We've got a 75% success rate on helping them find jobs, uh, help them find housing if need be. Uh, help them get enrolled into their GED classes, vocational skills classes, so forth. All that comes with the program. Uh, we also do crime scene collation and vicinity search for your local law enforcement agencies. It comes with the program. It's part of the web-based technology. They can log in and tell where uh, crimes have taken place in, in the community and then do a, a search. And anybody that was on the electronic monitoring, they'll tell them if they were anywhere near the scene of the crime when it occurred. 
So all that comes with the program again, like we said. So a uh, lot and all the other counties that we are in, uh, the the defendant pays for that. Uh, actually, they run it through the jail. Uh, the jail does the hookups for us and removes the devices for us. They act as a local supervisor. We also provide at no additional cost an iPhone uh, that the uh, the jail will be able to use. They can use that for business purposes. We pay the bill, um, and then they can also on their iPhone be able to track and see where these folks are as well. Um, uh, we we do charge the county, but the county will turn that charge in turn charge the defendant. So it's passed through. Uh, and actually, you know, a lot of the other counties, the uh, jails are up in the price just a little bit and charging a little hookup fee or just charging a couple of dollars, a few extra dollars a day uh, for administrative costs for um, doing the monitoring. A lot of these um, defendants can pay for it. They go out to these jails on a regular basis and put money down on their canteen account on a weekly basis. Uh, have family members that do that. Um, so it's a great program. It's not just to generate a little bit of revenue for the jail, but we are about getting folks rehabilitated back into the community, trying to stop the revolving door <coughs> to the judicial centers with the same people coming in and out on a regular basis. Uh, just for example, up in Gallatin County, who we have, a, have a, an agreement with, we got two people up there who, would heroin, who were heroin addicts into a drug treatment facility up in northern Kentucky. It didn't cost them a dime. Just because our social service workers already had those contacts uh, and it was a federally funded program. So that's two people who are no longer having to go through the revolving door of the court system. We got them helping them get off, they kick their habit of heroin and uh, get them rehabilitated to become hopefully um, good community servants and uh, get them jobs back in the community, paying local taxes, so forth, so on. So our contract would be with, um, with, the, with the county and um, uh, you know, again, with the jail would kind of oversee it on a local level for us. We provide all the devices. There's no cost for bringing them down and all that kind of stuff. We don't charge for what sits on the shelf. Uh, we track through um, uh, traditional ankle bracelet, GPS ankle bracelets, and also, also through smartphone technology. Uh, so in some cases, we actually give a participant a smartphone and track them that way, and they're tied to their phone through uh, voice biometrics. So it's... Um, uh, it's cutting edge technology and it would be great to have uh, Marshall County come on board with us. Especially this is my stopping ground down here being from this area, you know, and you're dealing with somebody that you know, it's a Kentucky company, we're based in Kentucky, we're a national company but we're headquartered in Lexington. Uh, again, we have somebody who works Western Kentucky for us, that way if there's any, any problems the jail can call him and he'll be right there. So, Chuck, I'll take any I know, questions. I know many of the counties uh, are already uh, involved in this program. Yes, in fact, uh, some of our river counties, I know Hickman, Carlisle, uh, just name a couple. McCracken, McCracken signed up recently and now that they've opened up their new facility there at the jail, they're going to start putting some of their folks on this program. Uh, Ballard, Carlisle, Hickman. Your 56th Circuit, which is Livingston Line, Caldwell, Trigg, is that right? Uh, they're, the 56th Circuit signed a, a deal with us. Uh, we also have Christian County down in Hopkinsville. We have um, uh, recently just signed up um, Henderson, Webster, Union, Crittenden. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of counties in the, this area who are, who've partnered up with us. And the great part about that is, you know, you can work with these other counties. When so, regardless, if you have somebody on your system, it doesn't matter if they go to Nashville, you're going to see where they're going. Or if they're in California, you're going to see where they're going. Uh, but you can work with these other counties just because everybody's going to be on the same system, so it would be a good partnership. And talking with Judge Faust this morning, uh, Judge Faust came by uh, there on a, what do they call it, a Fur holiday? Furlough. Furlough, Furlough, Furlough day. day. But anyway, uh, he said, you know, uh, there will be occasions uh, where we might not want to use it. The, the, the crime will, will fit the, whether or not they think someone is eligible. But that will be up to him and, and uh, Judge Tilly. Uh, it would be their discretion on who is uh, placed on home incarceration or who they think should be actually behind bars. So uh, it seems to be, uh, you know, everything I've heard about the program from other judges who are using it uh, are very delighted with it. So uh, uh, I would. It would be my recommendation that we try it.
uh, and go into a contract with uh, uh, with Carsoft and working with the jailer and with the judges. That's mainly in the county attorney and the Commonwealth attorney uh, who will be making a recommendation <coughs> of whether or not a person is eligible for this type of home incarceration or whether they need to be behind bars. Judge, there just to, just so you know, there are, and this is a question that usually gets brought up. Um, there's no minimum, so you don't have to use X amount. If you use one one month and you use 25 the next month. So be it. Um, obviously, we would like for you to use 25. <coughs> but regardless, if you use one one month, 25 next, that's what you use. Yeah. So we're not holding you to a minimum um, on the on the usage. My only question is that a lot of times when I'm in the courtroom, you have someone in front of the judge for non-payment of fines and fees, that sort of thing. So if we're fronting the cost, what is the chance that we would be? I can tell you what the other counties are doing. That's what I can speak to. Um, the individual would come into the jail. Uh, let's say the court, they agree that in court that this is what the, the program is, what they're going to put them on the program. They explain to them in court, you know, there's a cost on this. Can you, can you afford this? Yes, Your Honor, no, Your Honor, whatever. Well, they go to the jail, they pay the, whatever the hookup fee, whatever the jail decides to do, uh, and then they pay in advance, a week in advance. So payment up front. Correct. Insurance. Correct. And that's, that's been pretty successful. Uh, for all the other other participants, mm -hmm. uh, and if they can't pay it, then they're just not eligible for the program. Right. Um, but like I said, what we're seeing is a lot of these counties and a lot of these individuals and a lot of family members mm -hmm. will do it in order to keep their their sure. loved ones out of jail. Is it for everybody? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Some people need to be in jail, and that's going to be up to the the judges and the prosecutors to determine that. But those who do, who they feel like this is a a great opportunity for to see if they can get a second chance and get their feet back up on the ground and we help them get rehabilitated mm -hmm. or for those that are uh, maybe have some medical issues because that's a big burden on the, a lot of corrections budgets you have somebody in jail with medical issues the county ends up having to pay for that so you can put them on a home incarceration with one of our devices and counties are more than happy to pay that daily rate versus keeping that person and then them having to pay all their medical costs. Mm -hmm. So it's still going to save you money even if the county has to pay for that, those occasional situations mm -hmm. like that. And most people, I think, uh, when they're given the opportunity to either go to bed at night or bed down in Rogers Hotel will come up with the money. I, I think, or at least that's been the, what I've found in other counties that are using the program. Yes, sir. Uh, is it foolproof? Probably not. Nothing is, but the success rate that they've had up to this point uh, has been, in my judgment, remarkable. One other thing is part of our program, and I think that we need to, to, you should be aware of, and this is a great service that's offered to the people in your community, is a domestic violence program. We are Amanda Law compliant, so we can actually give a device to a victim from a, in a domestic situation, and if the offender gets within so many feet of that uh, uh, victim, it lets he or she, whoever that victim is, know that that offender is close. We can actually set outlying boundaries of usually DVOs are 500 to 1,000 feet. We can set 2,000, 3,000 feet as outlying boundaries. So when that person even starts to get close, we get a heads up. We can call local law enforcement, those type of things. Um, so it's Amanda Law, we're Amanda Law compliant with our technology. Um, and that is a, a great service that you would be um, uh, being you know, able to provide to the community that's, that's out there that if a, somebody in a domestic situation wanted to use this that they could, you know, it could end up saving their life. I think it sounds great. Where, where do all of the, um, you mentioned contacting law enforcement, so if you have something that alerts, and I, I read through this and saw the different um, variables that would mm -hmm. require alert status, would that go always to law enforcement or a mixture between probation, parole, and law enforcement? Uh, we give uh, in a couple of different ways. We of course, we give a supervisor a phone. So if somebody violates, they get a text message. However, we also have a 24-7 call center in Lexington that we monitor all these folks. So if somebody violates, they go, uh, we, we set up inclusion and exclusion zones. So if they're supposed to be at home, that's an inclusion zone. If they're not supposed to be at their ex's house, that's an exclusion zone, hypothetically. Or if they stole from Walmart and not supposed to be at Walmart. Okay, so uh, if they uh, penetrate that boundary, then it lets us know 
and our call center will immediately call whoever the local law enforcement agency is assigned to that area. Yeah, that's, that would be my question. How, how would we set that up since it is home incarceration? Is that going to be the responsibility of the jail to do that or is it going to fall to me? That's, well, that's my, that's my question, I mean, because it even says, for instance, if there's no activity within 20 minutes, it'll ping, and then if there's not a response, I'm assuming somewhere locally that information would have to be focused in one particular area. Is that going to be law enforcement or? Well, we notify the jail, I okay. think, because I think in this situation, the way we had talked about, the jail would be the local agency in contact. That would be up to you all. Uh, on who would go and pick up that person if there's a violation. Obviously, if it's a domestic situation, sure, your sheriff's yeah. office or state police or local police department's going to go sure. anyway. But if it's that person who um, uh, left their house or whatever, that's going to be up to you all uh, on who picks that person up. Regardless, the person is violating the court order. So that's going to be... Uh... Now, do you want to know if somebody went to Walmart at 2.30 in the morning and they stole from there five months ago do you really want to be woke up at 2.30 in the morning to go pick them up, or do you want to wait till 8.30 the next morning and then review the technology and go pick them up that day or at least talk to the judge about it? Those are your options. We can tailor this to, yeah, I want to be notified at 2 o'clock in the morning for the domestic situations and so forth, but I don't really want to know at 2 o'clock in the morning if they went to Walmart just because they stole from there five months ago. So if we entered into the contract, you all could meet with jail, law enforcement, probation, parole, and just kind of line that out so everybody's on the same page. As I, I can give them direction on what the other counties are doing, okay. and then that's a decision that they would they would make locally. Uh, I, mean, I can't tell them what they. And this is your county inmates only that they're doing this with, right? Correct. Okay. And then as they go through the the judicial system, you know, get bound over to the grand jury, go into circuit court. Uh, you know, we are on the AOC approved list, so actually. Uh, circuit judges, if they want to put somebody on electronic monitoring, they can go on our system through the jail, which is even more additional revenue that the jail could generate. Um, you know, it just doesn't have to be the county inmates. So, you know, in circuit court, you know, if they say somebody needs to go on a monitor, then they can send them over to the jail, and the jail can hook them up. So it actually can generate more more folks. You can also look at it this way: uh, you you get some of these county inmates out. Free up a few beds, hopefully get some more of the class D's in, which generates even more revenue for the your your local jail. Any other questions? It's limited to cell service. Every every uh, GPS tracking and monitoring service is cell. So what happens is it takes the GPS points, transmits them, transmits that data through G, through uh, cell service. But it so, is cell service. Yes, sir. So it's limited if it's they're out, they get, end up outside of coverage. Uh. Yes, and I can tell you uh, what we have coming in January is uh, we're going to be able to solve that. What will happen is our devices, once it goes into an area where there's no cell service, it will switch over to satellite communication and continue to transmit the data so nobody goes okay. off the grid. That'd be good. What, what service are you running off? We of? use AT&T. I was about to say AT and T is not real strong yeah. in this area. Verizon is high. We use AT and T, and it doesn't matter if it's 4G, yeah. 3G, or Edge. You're going to get you're going to get all the points and the GPS tracking. But we use AT and T. But that's a moot point. Come here in just a couple months. Oh, that'd be good. I make a motion that we enter into the contract, Judge. Um, and then my only, I guess, concern would be that we just stipulate that the charges be paid up front, I, I would be comfortable with that. I, I'm sure that the jail wouldn't have a problem, would you all think? No, I no, think, I think, that's, I think that's Roger understands that's the way it's going to work. <laughs> Do we need to let Kevin and Roger and put their heads together and come up with exactly how we yeah. address this? We need to, and I don't know why I wasn't included in this meeting. Well, that's what I was thinking. If we move forward with it, if they could meet with you all and you all decide how that information is going to be disseminated. Um, you know, you're I guess the to. assumption was that I'll be the one to go pick them up. And that's why I wasn't included. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, that's why I asked the question, where, where was this going to go? Because I know that we don't want to unduly burden any agency, but, I, but it sounds like it, it can be funneled out to several different entities. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but one thing to think about is uh, if, when these folks know that they're on a monitoring device, if they were just already out and not being monitored, then they're more likely to probably get in trouble and you're going to be dealing with them more in a, in, 
more frequently than if they are on the monitor. So I, I, you're less likely to see the same faces when they are on a monitor versus when they're not on a monitor. So it actually goes cut down on, in, on some of your uh, calls with some of the some of the usual suspects. I guess you could say. If there's somebody that needs to be picked up, it's going to be on a warrant. So right, unless the judge stipulates, if you violate, these guys can pick you up. Some counties do that. Some judges do that. I have some judges judges say. You know, bring it to me, and we will issue a uh, show cause order on the violation for their violation. So if that happens here, I think, it, I think it would be on a warrant here, and in that case, it's going to be any peace officer can go yeah, pick that that's, pick up. That's that up to the county. I, yeah. I can just tell you what other sheriff's do. office, state police, city city police, any any peace officer. Depends on their what their violation is. If it's a domestic situation, obviously they're going to be getting right there. Sheriff Bob mentioned tabling it until you all have a chance to meet. Do you want us to table it? to give you all an opportunity or I mean I, I definitely we need to talk with Roger but if you all feel comfortable uh, with it I don't I don't have any problems I, and, and I know sheriff and I've known each other for a long time so sheriff I'll take full responsibility for you not getting in on the first meeting so <laughs> you can take it out of me later but I can I'm down here a lot and I'll be glad to sit down with these folks and, and, and help them and guide them on what other counties are doing uh, again mm -hmm. I've uh, known known your officials here for a long time so I don't think that's going to be an issue. It looks like it'd be simple to to get Kevin up to speed, and then the next oh, yeah. in the next meeting, then we can we make can, a decision. Or we could do it at lunch. <laughs> if y'all feel comfortable with it now, I, I don't have any issue with it. I mean, if y'all want to go ahead and do it now, I feel free to. <clears throat> well, if you're fine with it, I guess. What's the duration of the agreement going to be, Judge? You know, is it a year? It's it's a year. It's year a year contract. contract. But like I said, if you don't run anybody. If the judges don't use it, then I mean, but, you know, but here's the thing: you have it at your, the judges and the prosecutors will have it at their disposal, disposal. as a resource and a tool, and it's a great tool. Talking about the the, the crime scene coalition, that's something that's really going to benefit, benefit the sheriff's office. A lot of the guys have MDTs in their cars; they have air cards. They can have their air cards on and actually see where these people are in real time. I mean, it's a great, great service, and you know we can. Uh, if you all approve it today, we can do training within the next couple of weeks and have them started within the, you know here here in two or three weeks. Um, so it's it, you know. Well, several of our detectives' cases have involved you know re re offenders, and uh, that would have been a big help in the right direction. So, I, Chuck, didn't you tell me that if an agent if a different agency chooses, they can purchase or can get the equipment to monitor as well, so that you got more than one. Like if the sheriff's office wanted to buy buy their own uh, phone to to monitor, I thought oh, there was... Oh, no, here's what you're talking about. How's that work? Okay. Any additional iPhones that you all have. Do you have an iPhone? No. Okay. If you or any of your deputies had an iPhone, we can put that supervisor's app that's on the, the one phone we're going to provide you. That's what you're talking about. We can put that on any iPhone, and there's no additional cost for additional logins or putting that on iPhones. If your counselor over here has an iPhone or any of his assistants who are in court on a regular basis, they can put it on their iPhones, and they can log in and see where these people are. I have judges, you know, district and circuit judges who have it on their personal iPhones because, one, as one uh, female judge told me, before she goes in and goes grocery shopping at Kroger, she wants to know if anybody's there. So that is, uh, that's just something else that we, we provide. So. <laughs> Any of his deputies that have iPhones, and we've hired an Android programmer, so in the next few weeks we'll be able to put it on Android-based phones. You know, if uh, if the jail and, and everybody agrees, any, any however many people in the sheriff's office, they can have login credentials as well, and that's a great tool for his detectives to be able to use. And since this is a, a, a county um, <coughs> entity that would be approving the contract, would this also uh, be able to be used by the cities? That's if, if, the, if uh, Roger and your sheriff and your county attorney, if you all say you want to give them some login credentials, that's up to you all. I mean, you just I tell us who. Helpful. It's, it's all the same system. You just tell us who. And we're going we're gonna to issue out a, a password and login credentials for them so they can, they can get online and look at it if they want to. Okay. I, I've got some 911 dispatch centers that, are, that leave the dashboard up on their computer. Mm -hmm. That way, they can actually see if somebody violates in those domestic type situations or whatever. That way, it saves. I mean, we're still going to make a call, mm -hmm. but they see it when it happens, just like we do, versus having to wait for us to generate the phone call. Mm -hmm. They actually see it. So, 
I mean, it's a. Uh, I would think you all should just need to get together and decide who all needs okay. to have that information. You're okay then. To second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries. Chuck, I'll get with you uh, to sign off on behalf of the counties, and then we'll get uh, Roger and Kevin together and decide the fee that they want to charge. I'm going to leave that up pretty sure. much up to the law enforcement uh, on what fees we need to charge on this situation. Then when the judges say this is appropriate at this point, then we'll collect the fee. And, and Jeff's got a copy of the contract. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, so. All right. I'll talk to you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Any other old business? I just had one question, Judge. The yes. um, we were working on a, the nuisance ordinance provision for the for the bid purpose. Do we have that verbiage to where we can run it so people can bid on the removal of the? Yes, yes, I've got okay. that to plug in our bid. Okay. Okay, let's move into new business. Uh, the Gilbertsville Fire Protection District. Uh, as per Karis Chapter 75, the Gilbertsville Fire Board did not hold a public election uh, for Curtis Wells. Uh, his term has expired in June of 2012. This was an oversight uh, on the part of the department, uh, and they asked, can we have the judge reappoint Mr. Wells for another term? Uh, <coughs> And I believe, under the statute, CARES uh, 75031, says in the event of a vacancy in the term of an appointed or elected trustee, the county judge executive shall appoint, with approval of the fiscal court, a trustee for the remainder of the term. Uh, so if there is no objection, uh, I would recommend we reappoint Mr. Curtis Wells uh, on the Gilbertsville uh, fire Protection Board. I this motion, is, Judge. have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. I don't know if all of you received a copy of the uh, report of the Marshall County Conservation District. Uh, by the way, remember, we'll have a meeting with them this Friday morning uh, at 8 o'clock at the grand jury room uh, in regard to what I... We, yeah, now, just judicial billing. Uh, their report, their financial statement, they had total receipts of $186,851.19. Uh, total available. Uh, well, they had was 273,985.10. Their total expenditures uh, was $141,370.24, leaving a balance in Ju at the end of June of 132,614.86. Uh, their members, uh, Kyle O'Dell is the chairman, Jeff Futrell, vice chairman. Dennis Henson, Secretary, Russell Riley, David Joseph, Ronnie Hargis, and Philip Jarvis uh, are the members uh, of the Conservation Board. Uh, I would entertain a motion to accept their financial report subject to audit. I have a motion. Is there a second? All in favor of the motion, say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries. Marsh County Public Library District has submitted their financial statement for the period beginning July 1, 2011 and ending June 30, 2012. They had total revenues of $1,938,226. Uh, they had a carryover from a prior year of $1,791,564. Total available, $3,700,000. $129,790. Their expenditures were personnel, a million, $94,311. Operations, 682495 
capital outlay 87,330. Total expenditures of 1,864,136. Uh, this is just the summary of their financial statement. I uh, would move that we ex or ask your approval to accept this uh, subject to audit. Thank you. Motion, Judge. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries. Still want to have an agreement between the Kentucky Department of Transportation, Department of Rural and Municipal Aid, Office of Rural and Secondary Roads. This is between KYTC and Marshall County to perform bituminous resurfacing on county roads in the amount of $614,325. This agreement entered into by and between the Commonwealth of Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Department of Rural and Municipal Aid, here in call of the department, and the Marsh County Fiscal Court, here and after call of the county. Whereas it would be to the benefit of the traveling public to perform bituminous resurfacing with hot mix asphalt on various county roads, which shall here and after be referred to as the project. And whereas the county has expressed its desire to perform the work for the aforementioned project and be responsible for all phases of the project. Now, therefore, and in consideration of these premises and the mutual covenants contained herein, the party agrees as follows. The department shall be responsible for providing rural secondary funding in an amount not to exceed $614,325 for the above-mentioned project. If the project is performed by contract, the county shall employ only contractors pre-qualified by the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet and shall comply with all legal binding requirements, including but not limited to provisions of KRS 45A and 424. Concurrence must be obtained by the county through the District 1 Chief District Engineer in Paducah prior to the awarding of any contract for work or material to be used on the project. The county shall cause the project to be constructed to a level which meets applicable county road and bridge standards. All bridges will be required to meet or exceed the H-20 loading and all materials paid by the department used on or incorporated into the project shall meet the requirements specified in the highway department specification for road and bridge construction, the current addition of state specifications. The county will obtain any required permits or approval of plans for work to be accomplished on state-owned right-of-way from the cabinet's district office in Paducah. The county hereby agrees to put forth a reasonable effort to do maintenance on roads listed herein prior to bituminous surface begin, being applied. Maintenance being defined but not limited to proper ditching, cleaning or replacement of clogged or deficient drain tiles, proper shouldering, surface preparation, and any other obvious maintenance the road may need. The minimum thickness of any bituminous surface applied shall be one inch. The county shall indemnify and hold harmless the department and all its officers, agents, and employees from all suits, actions, or claims of any character because of any injuries or damages received by any person, persons, or property resulting from the construction of the project. The department shall reimburse the county up to $614,325 for completion of work by the county under the obligation of this agreement which shall represent the total obligation of the department. The county agrees to be responsible for all costs above $614,325. However, the county shall not be required to expend any more than $614,325. The county shall maintain for a period of three years all records of material, equipment, and labor costs involved in the performance of the work for the project in order to obtain reimbursement from the department 
for the project, the county shall submit to the Office of Rural and Secondary Roads documented invoices of material, equipment, and labor used on the project, including certification that the work was accomplished on a publicly maintained facility according with this agreement. The county may submit current billing reflecting the actual cost of the project during any given work period. The bill should indicate it if, if it is for partial payment or final payment. The current billings will be paid within a reasonable time after the receipt of same by the department. However, in no event is the county to submit billings for work performed for less than a 30-day period. The department reserves the right to inspect the methods used in order to perform the work necessary to successfully complete the project and also reserves the right to cease all work commenced under the terms of this agreement at any time. The county will pass the attached resolution and a copy of that resolution shall be attached to and made a part of this agreement. We'll get to the resolution here in a minute. Got the roads listed. Uh, Falks, Mermy, Walnut Grove, Jolly Roger, Dogwood, Pembroke, White Dove, Little Rock, Butler Lane, Atlanta Lane, Washburn Road, Woodall Cutoff, Cap Springs, Vaughn's Chapel, Calvert City Road. Do I have a motion to allow me to sign this agreement on behalf of the county. I'd make that motion, Judge. To a second. Second. Motion and second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. If y'all ask me to read it again, I'm gonna kill every one of you. <laughs> we did get some additional money, as you saw. Uh, Now, here's the resolution. This is for the Fiscal Court of Marshall County resolution adopting and approving the execution of a rural secondary program agreement between the Fiscal Court and the Commonwealth of Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, Department of Rural and Municipal Aid, and accepting all roads and streets referred to therein as being a part of the county road system. Now, be it resolved by the Fiscal Court that the Fiscal Court does hereby certify that all roads and streets referred to in said agreement are county roads as defined in KRS 178.010. The fiscal court does hereby ratify and adopt all statements, representations, warranties, covenants, and agreements contained in said agreement and does hereby accept said agreement and by such acceptance agrees to all of the terms and conditions therein stated. The county judge executive of the county is hereby authorized and directed to sign said agreement is set forth on behalf of the Fiscal Court of Marshall County, and the County Clerk of Marshall County is hereby authorized and directed to certify thereto. The vote taken on said re uh, resolution. I would entertain a motion to approve the resolution. Motion to approve the re resolution, Jack. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries. Would each of you sign that agreement, please? Intrafund trend. Let's see. You've got a ordinance here, Emily. You want to? Um, I do have a budget amendment ordinance 2012-07. That I would like to get approved so that we can amend our fiscal year 12 13 budget to reflect these additional revenues <coughs> and expenditures. Do you want me to go ahead and read? Go this ahead. Ordinance, Judge? An ordinance relating to the annual budget and amendment thereof, whereas the County of Marshall has received additional funds. Now, be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of Marshall County that Section 1, the annual budget for fiscal year 2012 2013, is amended to increased revenue counts, FEMA. Uh, DR 1818 distribution $45,455.61. The PBA statutory contribution reimbursement $2,238. Ambulance grant equipment 
$17.99. Surplus real property sales, $7,500. Catastrophic medical claims, $3,969.47. Truck license and distribution, $31,661.17. Animal shelter grant reimbursement, $2,629.60. West Kentucky Twin Bridge Committee reimbursement is $1,901.10. The County Road Aid Fiscal Year 12 was $199,641. Coal Severance, $16,395.05. ADF Grant is $2,773. Water Vision 2020 Grant, $47,216.90. City of Benton reimbursement, $252,000. $252. Yes, apologize. $252. Operation Workforce Grant, $2,568.15. Board of Assessments, $200. Uh, FEMA DR3231 is $32.59 for a total increased revenue of $380,451.63. Our expenditure accounts will increase by reserves, $57,000. $518.90, that's for general fund. PEA statutory contribution, $2,238. Ambulance grant paid equipment, $16,017.99. Inmate medical expenses, $3,969.47. Reserves to the road fund, $247,697.22. Other contract services, $2,773. Water Vision 2020 expenses, $47,216.90. County Park General Supplies, $252. Board of Assessments, $200. Operation Workforce Grant Expenses, $2,568.15. For a total increased expenditure of $380,451.63. Section 2, the amounts added to the revenue and expenditure accounts are in Section 1 are for governmental purposes. Approved by the Marshall County Fiscal Court. This is the fourth day of September upon your passage. What's your pleasure? Motion to approve the budget amendment. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor of the motion. And say aye. Aye. Can you oppose no? Motion carries. Judge, I had a call from Mrs. Williamson. I think she has spoken to you sometime back as well about uh, the road over on Opal Lane off of Grigstown Road that they were interested in increased tax bills annually to pay for the cost of that surfacing that road and we had talked about that some time past but I wanted to speak to Jeff about that today where are we and is that a possibility yeah they have to uh, I mean I, there's a, uh, a schedule in the uh, statute the things they have to do then they present it to us to you to uh, <clears throat> to uh, uh, basically you... set that tax okay. what they will do is agree to tax themselves mm -hmm. and they have to determine you know based it'll you know it'll, 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 what each person pays of it based right. on frontage right that's it because Are, have, have you spoken to her about that in the past? Not, not in a long time. I've, I've wrote, spoken. We, we talking about Ladonia. Uh -huh. we, uh, we Jason has. He's. I we, wrote a letter to, I think to, to Ladonia, and then also to the folks out at uh, Cary Landing, mm -hmm. it's kind of giving it an overview of the process and showing them where the statutes and everything were. They I think, seem to be unclear as exactly what their next step is and getting that done. So well, I think well, they got a copy of that. Well, in your district in to see me this morning, Terry. Uh, you got a Mr. copy of Zimmer. Letter, I did. Mm -hmm. They live, uh, what did I say, Russell? Whispering Hills? Whispering Oaks Road, which is the same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the developer told them that, or according to them, right. he's going to. And he said they're still interested and hadn't heard from us. And I said, well, uh, you know, we went through. Russell had all of the... Uh, estimates done some time ago mm -hmm. so he indicated and then I had Jeff call his cell phone uh, because there's certain steps that have to be taken mm -hmm. and then they will have to agree over a period of time if we create if I understand it now if we create this taxing district we'll have to come to a determination of how much more mm -hmm. they're willing to pay per year 
and for how many years it's going to take to pay for the upgrades and the paving of that road, it's if I understood it. Yeah. Is it a 10 years? I think so. 10 years. Jeff, so, there's, one, there's one resident that they were concerned that would not participate, and they wanted to know what how that would affect the project. I well, I mean, if, I, th I think it's a special district that's created. And if, I mean, if it's created. All or none. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's a going to be all or none. It's so they, they all have to agree? No. Or just unanimously? If, uh, it's been so long since I've looked at it. If, if so many agree, I think maybe out of the persons affected, then uh, the court would then have the authority to establish this district. And, but then everybody would be taxed. Right. You can create it even if nobody, okay. agree, not if everybody agrees. Yeah, that's the biggest first. part is making sure that you've got all the specs on the road. Well, we, we have set out in our ordinance that certain things must be met, certain grade and drain, mm -hmm. uh, the base surface, and then a base code, and then a file code. Uh, I yeah, think I, they have copies yeah. of all that. Yeah, uh, because I remember us talking to those folks before, and then Mr. Zimmer and his folks, if you remember, came in there, and we met with them late in the afternoon. Right. And they were kind of, if I recall, at that time, kind of uncertain whether or not they wanted to mm -hmm. uh, to participate. But we went ahead and did. Russell's got it. He showed it to him this morning. Russell happened to be here when he was here. Uh, what the cost was then? Now that's a year ago. Mm -hmm. So we know. That blacktop has gone up about three dollars a ton, right. so we'd have to add that in or get somebody else to run another right. estimate. You know, I, I don't know. I'll talk to them some more about it. Yeah, can I use my famous saying and call the county attorney's office? Pardon me, may I tell them to call the county attorney? You, you feel free to, <laughs> that'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, Terry, I told him you and I'd be glad to meet with him mm -hmm. uh, if he wanted to set up another meeting. Okay. And uh, Jeff, they're supposed to get back with Jeff, right, Jeff? They said they'd call you back. Okay. <clears throat> we have an inter fund transfer uh, for the fiscal court uh, from the general fund to the road fund, sixteen thousand three ninety five oh five. Occupational Tax Administrative Fund of the General Fund uh, of 300000 Occupational Tax Administrative Fund of the Jail Fund of 150000 making a total transfer uh, of $466,395.05. And this moves the coal severance funds to the road fund. Do I hear a motion to approve the interfund transfer? Motion to approve. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries. All right, Mrs. Carter is here. She has been doing some research for us, and I think she wants to meet with us briefly. In the executive session. I believe we can do that. In the All right. So I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. A motion, motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. We'll call the court back into regular session. We were discussing, and in a previous meeting, the fiscal court uh, members and the members of the refuse district board. Uh, because of a conflict of interest for Jeff, uh, agreed to ask the Kentucky Bar Association if our other assistant county attorney, Lisa Carter, could advise us on, on issues when she has done so, given us her opinion. The statutes call for two ways that boards can be appointed. We are a single county waste management district. 
B allows for more than three board members. In the past, we've had as many, I believe, as four or five going back, years back. Right now, we have three. Our concern is that with the way the statute reads, one part of the county could be left out. Right now, we have a board member from the south end, one from the central end, one from the city, and the north end right now is was a seat held by Galen, uh, which is now vacant because of Galen's passing. Under the statutes, the 109 district, you have an A and B, and we, and I'll leave this up to the court, but I think we agreed on going with the B section, which says one member, uh, the mayor of the most populous city, would have a member, and then the county could have two or more members on the board selected from urban or rural areas in the same proportion as the urban rural population distribution in the county. Now, in our conversation, but we, we've never said which A or B we want to use. Uh, so I think it was an agreement that we would use B. Uh, so I would entertain a motion to except section B of 109.115, the establishment of powers and directors of a 109 taxing district. Make that motion, Judge. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. Motion carries. I have the audit for the refuse district for the year ended 2012, June 30th, 2012. It's here for everybody's approval. There was no, I've gone through it carefully, uh, no exceptions. Uh, so once you know we have it, if anybody wants to review that. You've all had an opportunity to see the bills. I have a motion to pay the bills. Second. Motion and second. All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carries. Is there any other business come before the court? Judge, would you mind if I just um, ask for uh, if anyone's interested in serving on the refuse board, we do have some an opening um, in the north end of the county, but I guess anyone who has an interest. Anyone, we would, I guess, preface that, Commissioner Drew, by saying we would prefer someone to represent that area. Right. Is right. that a good uh, way to put it? I mean, I don't anyone want Anyone with qualifications, we've talked yeah. extensively about looking If they at would let us, let us know, and we would certainly <laughs> look at their uh, application because uh, that's the reason we chose B is so that we can have a four member board at least mm -hmm. to try to give a balance to the district. Do they need to turn those into your office? Yeah, or they can, if they give them to one of y'all, okay. get it to me and then we'll sit down and review them. Be, yeah. Any other business come before the court? I'd like to ask about my road. Riley Road, uh, I mean Phillips Road. I'm not getting any kind of help out there. Now this is a right-of-way issue where the landowner will not give any right-of-way, correct? I think we've tried everything in the world. I, I don't know what else to do. We're planning on trying to pave it and we're going to widen it as much as we can. That, uh, Why would you pave it if you can't get two vehicles down it? But we can get it as make it as wide as we can. Yeah, but that still don't get two vehicles down. I, I mean, what else somebody do? has to back out on that Jackson School Road with no visibility. I've already told my grandson and my daughter-in-law not to back out anymore. 
Now, what happens, they're going to call me and I'm going to call the sheriff. He can come out here and stop traffic and I can back out. But I can bull up as much as y'all can. You know, I'm trying to keep somebody from getting hurt. It's, it's not, he told me it's winning and losing. It's not winning and losing. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I mean, somebody took that road. Somebody needs to stand up and make it right. You've got the authority to take it. Make a turnaround. Don't take it off. I don't care if you wind it. Just make it where I don't have to back out on that road. I mean, we've got out. We've extended the sewers at the at the road, and I believe you're going to be able to pull in with two cars can sit side by side at the, at the road. If you pull in, if you can't get down it, you still got to back up. But I wouldn't. But I, I wouldn't back out in the road. I agree with that. Well, what do you do? I, I don't know. Well, I made that case to the gentleman about his land, and he still didn't want to give. I absolutely well, made that case. People hurt, and now I'm trying to keep somebody from getting hurt. Yeah, and I, and I Go talked look to at him the road. About, Have you looked at the road, Mitch? Go look at the road. I mean, Terry knows. I mean, anybody who goes to look at it knows it's unreasonable. Are there options, Jeff? I mean, can it's you... a very narrow lane, and when it was taken in, I don't know. Uh, but it goes back to one property, right, Dennis? Well, there's three yeah, houses. There's three houses three on it. Oh, there's three houses. Three houses on it. Houses on it. Yeah. I think it was originally it was just one back there when I. That when it, I don't know. That was a long time ago. And I know it's a very narrow lane. It, I mean, it's. And the deeds call for. Just what's there? What a twenty foot? Oh, uh, it's not. It's not much. No, no, I don't know. It's not twenty foot. It's less than that. Probably fourteen. Are there options for condemnation? Condemnation. Is is that something that's been done before? No. Had one pending, but we that we got resolved. Is that something that the property owner? No. Pushes forward. No, you all does? would determine. What, what you all yeah. want to take and then condemn it and go through the that process which is you can't buy it then you just can want to take go through a trial trees, determine it's a public purpose the the road, and then the they'd set a price mm -hmm. does he still live back there Dennis? yeah and the people bought the property knowing the size of the road oh no, uh -uh. I, I probably, I thought it was a county road. I didn't dream if somebody took a road and not taking it right away. You know, I mean, maybe I should have checked in further before I went back there, but I did you So know, you I, thought there was more right away than oh, what? Oh, I thought we could make right away, and somebody told me there's a cemetery back there. Of course, they could widen that road, but I don't, the cemetery disappeared, but calls for it on the deed, but it's disappeared. We've got a lot of roads that are in that size range. But a lot of roads you have, which if I could see to back out, it wouldn't be that big a deal, but I cannot see. You can barely see to pull out, and you back out, you cannot I see. I, That's because of the trees. I made that well, case. there's a telephone pole there, <clears throat> and there's a big high bank there. I made so, that case to the landowner well, more than once. He's and unreasonable. He, he, didn't, he didn't want to give. And you and told I, me the other day I, he didn't want me to win. He didn't want to well, lose. I'm I not told trying you, to win a damn thing. I just don't want I, anybody to get I hurt. I said I felt like he, he felt like it was a win, winning and losing. Well, it's not winning and losing. But I told him also that if somebody backed out, I mean, it was going to be on on our heads. And, and uh, I wasn't able to convince him to uh, to allow me to, to widen the road. And Is he willing to sell it? Is he willing? Have we I've asked? tried to buy it. He's not willing to sell. We had it set up to put his fence back, and I mean, we had everything as the road. We had an agreement to put the fence back, as, right. as, as well or better than it was, and we had all that. We actually went out and uh, began to look at it as far as developing a line there where we could work, and and then he stopped us. So, well, he's got people coming out too, and I don't want them to get hurt either. Well, I mean, I made that case. It's for it, it, it's an accident waiting to happen. When it happens now or it happens 10 years from now, it's going to happen if we don't do something. You're not saying anything I hadn't explained to him. Well, somebody needs to do what's right. That's all I can tell you. I don't know if never have. Do what?
I was asking if the other property owner might be willing to come in and just discuss options with the court, maybe invite him in to come and speak with us at the next meeting and just see if we could come to some sort of resolve and we explain. Who else lives out there, Dennis, besides you? Daughter-in-law. Huh? Daughter-in-law. Sherry's daughter-in-law. Sherry. His, his wife. Gary's wife. wife's daughter-in-law. And they get mad yeah. when somebody has to back up. I mean, they don't like it either, but he controls the whole thing. And y'all know what he's controlling it. He on both sides of the road, though. Yeah. Yes. I mean, if you can't fix it, fix it where you turn around on that road. You're going to have to take something anyway. You know. I mean, we're wasting money to pave it because it's just going to make it that much higher. I mean, we're going to make it less road if we put pavement on it. I'd rather it be gravel. It's pavement. At least maybe you could get by because it's probably 12 inches above grade on the side where the blacktop's up. Well, it would help to grade it rather than to pave it. Well, I'd cut it all off if I was doing it. And I wouldn't pave it. I'd just leave it gravel. That way, maybe you could get by it. I mean, if we've got 17 foot, two mm -hmm. small cars might get by. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we, we could ask him by letter to appear before the next court meeting. I don't know that we could force him to come. You couldn't force him to. But there's, you know, you, you can, can settle it. And th under threat of condemnation, that happens all the time. What do y'all want to do? I say we just ask him to come in and talk to us. Maybe there's some options. Maybe it's just gotten so personal between. Well, it's not personal. I'm not well, mad no, at you. Well, no, you know what? But maybe he's mad at you. You know well, what I, I mean? Know, but so, I but maybe if if there were other people involved in the process, and I know Bob's done. I know for months he's come in and talked about your road. I mean, for months we've heard about the roads. I know he's been working on it. So maybe if we all just sat down and discussed it, maybe that would help. I mean, I think I'm trying to be fair. Sure. And I'm, you know, I'm just asking for help because I don't want anybody to get hurt. And I and I'm not. And we did agree, as Bob said, that that I think we'll have to take out some trees. Yep. They're dead. But we would do that, you know. And we would move his fence at our expense using our people. Yep. I think we've said we'd do all of this if he would give us some additional right of way to make it safer. Uh, if you can figure out a way to get out on that road when you pull in and not have to back, I don't care what you do, but I don't want anybody back out on that road, especially mm -hmm. my grandson. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand, Dennis. I, I know what yeah. you're saying. I, and I've, I've been out there, and it's just a very narrow And no lane. visibility. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I've said, we, we talked about the other night. Some roads you can see, but you cannot see. There's a little hill, and, and I mean, pulling out, you'll, I've nearly pulled out in front of people. But backing is really, you know, it's really serious. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm not, I mean, would it be fair to say if we asked the county attorney to write a letter to Mr. Young saying that we are contemplating condemnation but would like to talk with him and invite him to the fiscal court? Just to talk options. He may to talk about it. I mean, and we don't have to talk about it. I think that's something, if you're talking about condemnation, you can do in executive session. Am I correct? part of it uh, so I mean I, we're not trying to embarrass anybody just trying to solve a problem that apparently Bob has done everything that I know he's talked to me on several probably occasions wouldn't talk about, about uh, condemnation just, yeah. but anyway you can take that in the meeting, but, I don't, I don't know that I would but just ask that he appear just talk to him about, about all or do you like, all right I don't Thank mind writing okay. the letter uh, coming from me. I don't know if I'd have more clout coming from the county attorney, but I'd be more than happy to write the letter if that's what y'all want me to do. I talked to him too and told him what all we'd do. And he acted like, you know, he was, then all of a sudden it just oh, it his was, clowns up. We thought up. we had it, everything agreed to. I just want a little help. That's all. You know, I don't care. All right. Or we don't have to back out on the road. If that's what y'all want me to do, that's what I'll do. I'll get a letter out this afternoon and invite him to the next meeting. I think Bob's writing nothing. Yeah. I'm not like we're threatening. I don't want to be threatening, yeah. I, you know, but that's an option that the sure. court has. Sure. I'm not mad at him. I'm not yeah. threatening him, but I'd just like to have some kind of way to get on that ruffle. Yeah. You know, but well, I'm backing out. Surely you'll. I understand. 
All right. We'll get the letter out this afternoon. Does any other business come before the court? Donnie Duke, you got anything to say? Do what? That's oh, dirty. Dirty. <laughs> well, cloudy. 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 Oh. cloudy. <laughs> I'd have to bring you back, put you back on the payroll, Donnie. Keep these yeah, things man, checked you out. What do you up. think? <laughs> See? <laughs> we fixed that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Any other business? I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion adjourn. Have a motion second. Meeting adjourned.